Good evening and welcome to the stream this evening. I feel like sort of adding to the end of that, you know, with Zergen Art, <laughs> as though it could be anybody else, of course. Well, I suppose it could be, but <coughs> it is a single person channel, which is me, so it's unlikely to be anybody else. Um, silver, yeah. Reference picture. looks a bit better uh, dark grey dark grey was next which fear reaper seven good evening and welcome to the studio this evening black on the back of them I still have on the buffers. Okay, let's do the buffers. Whilst I've got silver in the uh, in the tool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just a bit, um, what on earth am I doing at the moment? I've just plain, been playing uh, a game before the stream, in fact the whole of this afternoon. I decided to sort of take the afternoon uh, off, so to speak, from uh, things like website and stuff to do with arts and uh, arts and crafts and uh, I've been playing a game of uh, Factorio which has proven to be quite an interesting game And you play it as well, uh, Fear Reaper. I only, um, I only bought it yesterday. I tried it on um, Friday night. I tried the um, the trial <laughs> on Friday night, and I bought it yesterday. And I've been playing it all day today. Got a reasonable distance into it, I guess. Um, but uh, somehow it does now seem slow occasionally when you're waiting for the research to complete. is I'm trying to get the accumulators You think it's way too difficult at times. Um, I think uh, I 
Um, I learned, well, I started, uh, created quite a few maps and uh, it was uh, really hard to find sort of um, resources, shall we say, for the very first playthrough. I kind of figured it would be nice to have something relatively easy, shall we say, to play. So I, I, um, I must have restarted it oh, about 10 or 15 times and then started playing with all the... Um, the adjustments just to try and get something which would be at least um, slightly friendly to start with for the first you know, for the first playthrough but uh, so I can kind of understand if it's um, if it's dropped you in an area with there's um, absolutely no resources then yeah it would be a real pain in the neck But there again, if it was so easy, we probably wouldn't play it at all. It's an interesting concept. Oh, you mean you're trying to overcomplicate things? Uh, yeah. I don't know. As I say, it's uh, it's other than the um, the demo campaigns. I've not really. Uh, I've only I've only sat it playing it once. So. It's an interesting game, though. For some reason, you know, it I can see it being quite um, quite an addictive sort of game to play. Because there's so many different ways in which you can um, you can play the game, so to speak. I've seen a few people uh, play, or, or a few playthroughs, not playthroughs, but a few people playing it on YouTube as well. And it's another one of those games where they go, where they, they um, when they start something like research or something like that, they, they cut the video until the research is ready. And it kind of, uh, kind of gives you a false sense of how long it takes. No, I was kind of really surprised just how long it takes for the research to complete and uh, until I realised uh, what yeah, what was happening, shall we say. And uh, it's the same thing as, as I said sort of with the arts and crafts where <laughs> you kind of, because of the time lapse you on some arts and crafts, you expect it to go really quickly and it doesn't. Same thing with Factorio. Kaliati. 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 Um, good evening. I trust you've received your thing back. Um, <laughs> it surprised me when I saw that. Uh, you've never seen this before. It's. I don't know what it's actually called. Um, the the company that makes this particular tool for it call it Punchcraft. Um, and effectively it's kind of a form of uh, rug making because what this tool does is push the thread through the material and then when you pull it back it creates a loop on the other side which is how um, rugs or some carpets are made and so um, it's kind of a uh, an extension of that really but on a miniature scale I'll turn it over in a minute, in fact I'll turn it over now and you sort of see it kind of looks rather untidy until uh, until you start to get more of the the threads in around 
around the existing ones and then it starts to um, it'll then start to sort of resemble what it's meant to resemble That's okay, yeah. <laughs> it was it was kind of funny because I um, I started up the stream Friday. It was kind of like uh, donation from, and I thought, wow. And then I thought, hang on a minute, that's it. well, apart from it being an odd number. <laughs> but, uh, and then I uh, read the message, and I thought. Uh, um, and I thought, of course, hmm, <laughs> I remembered, uh, I remembered Eddie, so not a problem. Although you have cost me 20p, I think it was, because PayPal, uh, PayPal requires a payment. <laughs> uh, Oh, have you had it happen to yourself? <laughs> oh dear. It was it was only because of the message that you put in here that made me realise it wasn't uh, what it was intended for. So, well, when you get the kit, I hope you enjoy it. Um, because I do find them. Uh, really fun to uh, to do so you never know though um, I found them kind of addictive shall we say uh, which is why I'm still doing them <laughs> so uh, you never know you might be you might be streaming some new stuff so that's the two front buffers um, they're by themselves and they'll probably sit there for a little while until we get round to the blue I'm going to put the edges, some edges on the wheels now with a dark grey. So for that I need to change the thread. <laughs> ah, that's okay. I admit I was a, a little bit disappointed when I saw um, the message but I, not enough to worry about if you see what I mean I kind of just found it funny so don't worry about it right great, great big 
a great big long threader just to go well I won't say down the complete length of this needle because I don't actually know how long the needle is but it's got to go in the needle and come out at this top end here so that I can put the thread through it And then we thread it through the side of the needle. Could not do this without the needle threaders. <laughs> You'll have to stream making that kit, you know, uh, Cagliati. That way we can all come on and say to you, um, uh, doesn't it take a lot of patience to do this? <laughs> And uh, I think I'd, I'd only consider somebody a hypocrite if they're going. If somebody was saying uh, something along the lines of, "How can somebody be so daft as to donate to the wrong person?" Then, when they do it, then you can laugh at them. But nah, I can understand it very easy, especially when you uh, do uh, stream to a lot of uh, people, and you know, the two of us do stream the same thing at times. So I can. Uh, I can quite understand how it might happen. Right, so I'm going to start with this back wheel and work my way forward. Yep, that's right. To some extent, it's the same, uh, same in um, real life for many things, to be honest. You can uh, quite easily apply the same sort of um, logic, shall we say. There's no uh, most of the time. There's no real uh, reason to do uh, to do things super fast. Uh, people just seem put their own self-imposed deadlines on things. And then there's a. Small gap. There's um, this material, I don't know quite how it's made, but there's um, there's an angle at holding, or a direction in which you hold the um, 
the pen that makes it go through the material a lot easier so direction as in rotation um, the um, the needle on the end uh, is a is shaped a little bit like a hypodermic needle in that it's got like a wedge shape on the end and uh, that wedge shape sort of points in one direction and it, it's a amazing just how in certain direction or certain rotations it can be really hard to get the needle to go through the material in other directions it sort of slips through without a problem you might just be able to see the light reflecting off it but it's kind of um, a wedge shaped tip and uh, and I never know which is the you know which direction is the best, but as, as you move the piece around at times, the, you just find the needle will just slip through without a noise, and uh, really easily. And if you can find that, it makes doing this uh, quite a bit easier actually. Because sometimes the needle sort of gets gets hung up on on a thread, and you can't push it through. For, uh, for anybody, well, I suppose you could if you put enough force on it, but um, it's like it's doing it now. I kind of have to just sort of find a slightly alternative position. You might you might be hearing a crunch as I do this, and that crunch is actually um, a thread in this sort of white material, which is actually which has been broken. And if you break enough of them, you will actually create a big hole. But I'm rather surprised it, this material doesn't unravel when that happens. Some other material that I have tried in the past just falls apart when you try and do this with it. This you can. Um, I could probably pull pull all pull all this thread out and do it again in exactly the same position three or four times at least before it starts to become unworkable. So it's it's um, easily possible to repair things as well if you've done something in this the wrong position. But if you get the needle position just or the needle rotation just right, it sort of slips very easily between the threads and. You get no crunch or anything it's just um, nice and uh, smooth and um, you've not broken any threads at all breaking threads by the way is not uh, it's kind of um, What's they intended, but it's uh, it is part of what happens. It's not uh, detrimental to what you're working on or anything like that. It's kind of an expected thing. And it doesn't show up. It doesn't uh, doesn't unravel as I mentioned or anything like that. Beads with holes in. Um, I don't do much with beads. Well, I don't do anything with beads, actually, to be honest. Um, you can get, um, fairly easily get cord with, um, it's built a bit, or well, made a bit like power, parachute cord. So it's cord. <laughs> it's a core cord uh, with coloured uh, coloured coatings on the outside I think you can get some Japanese type cords as well so you can make some interesting um, bracelets necklaces that sort of thing out of out of them um, no holes in them that's a bit harder then um, with them um, with the uh, with the rings, like in the kit, you can you can do what Adi does with the uh, with the rings, and that is 
uh, if they're the right size or you get the ones that are the right size you can make like a cage for the beads which um, will go in because you've seen AD make his uh, key fobs um, that sort of thing um, and maybe a mosaic yeah, um, just strings of tiny balls oh okay well with things like um, if, the, if, the, if they're already strung I guess or the, they're moulded are they moulded plastic um, so that they're joined to each other then you, at least you do have the option of, of sewing them to things um, if you've got lots of colours you can do pixel art with them because what you could do is take something something well it depends you've got a number of choices for a back backing plate shall we say um, I can think of things like plaster of Paris uh, or um, mud wall stuff or uh, epoxy resin for example where you could spread uh, spread it into a something like let's say like this which is you know a, a frame of some kind with just you know backing so you spread it you can spread a layer on there and then you can do like pixel art with it so you can actually sort of lay them out uh, in pixels um, so you could do like phys yeah, physical pixel art um, it, you'd want to do small sections at a time uh, because things like plaster of Paris or epoxy will go off uh, and um, then you obviously won't be able to set the beads in them um, you can with the with with sort of two or more beads that are joined together you can over the joint over the join between them so if you were if you were doing sewing you can put two uh, and loop a thread over the top to hold them down but that's probably um, a little bit fiddly and you'd have to be doing in, in at least twos um, So there's artwork like that. Um, I am just trying to think if the tell you what um, there's a channel that I um, that I do actually follow on YouTube called uh, Bedaholic. B e a d a h o l i q e I think it is. Um, it's a bead shop, so they're doing they do demonstration stuff uh, of various things. Um, it might just be worth looking at those videos because they do all sorts of stuff with with beads and other things in making making jewelry. Okay, mosaic pixel are kind of the same thing. I suppose the other thing that you could do with uh, with them, um, if you can do it use like an enclosed frame I'm, I'm using this but it's probably a bit big um, if they if they're all if they're cut into single beads you can obviously just I will say more or less pull them in sort them out into the so the picture is is what you want it to be and then uh, cut them with epoxy resin um, and you can get some fairly you need a, a good it wouldn't necessarily be a cloth background but it might you know you'd have to have it fairly solid so it didn't leak uh, which is not too difficult to do a piece of card something like this ring for example and it can be sort of anything put plasticine around the outside which will seal it uh, and then you know, put your put your beads in loose uh, and then you can pour self uh, thin epoxy resin um, not not the epoxy glue because that tends to be too thick but you can get epoxy resin which is meant for making um, making jewellery or, or encapsulating things uh, and it's it's quite a thin mixture when it's mixed and you could pour that over the top and uh, it's actually thin enough to so that it'll actually create a dome at the sides as well nice nice and round you'll probably take a, a fair amount depending on the size of the piece that you've done but then the beads would actually be encapsulated within it uh, and it would be a solid it would be a solid piece of thing um, which of course means it um, won't fall apart won't be um, easily scratched or anything like that so that's that's one way of holding them together um, 
never thought of it to be honest it's an interesting uh, an interesting thing uh, uh, what else could you do with them um... whilst they're in strings I don't know how well they'd weave. Um, <laughs> you get bags full of them. Uh, yeah, that's, um, what you mean? You go out and buy them because you like the look of them, or, or uh, you are, you have them given to you for free? Oh, you because they get thrown away. What the, what they use for them? Because obviously they they must be used for something like packing material or something. Um, don't know. Can't, can't imagine what they might be used for. I wonder if you could weave them. Yeah, I wonder if you could weave if they're in long strings. Whether you could sort of weave them in in some way, or, or you know, like braid them, all that sort of thing. Um, because I'm sure some of the um, some of the cord weaving techniques might work especially if they, if they are small tiny balls which are strung together i'm not uh, i'm about the only um i've not i've not actually done ever done any weaving the nearest i've done to weaving is using colored wire and uh, and box knots to create like um key fobs <laughs> like Aedes key fobs but uh, using using box knots and, and, and coloured wire um, Oh, I see what you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you did. You just mentioned the Mardi Gras, and of course now it it clicked the the beads. Yeah. Yeah. No, sorry, you, I just didn't connect the two. You you'd mentioned it, and I really didn't connect it. And then uh, yeah. Ah, I see. So yeah, I see what you mean. Um, I never really thought. I'll have, to, I'll have to think. If I think of anything, I'll, um, I'll let you know. I mean, the the, the obvious things is you know, like cut them into individual beads and use them like pixel art. But uh, you probably don't want to turn them back into another necklace <laughs> by braiding them or something like that. But. Uh, I wonder if they'd melt a bit like the um, um, the few the fuse beads. I'm trying to think what the trade name is, but the fuse beads. Uh, yeah, if you put them in a uh, in a pixel art pattern, whether you could actually fuse them together with an iron or something. Hmm. Yeah, anything hair gets tangled in anything like that, I can understand. Being, yeah, being bulky.
Um, I was just playing with an idea in my mind. I don't know quite why, how, whatever, whether if they were small enough to go inside something like a, a drinking straw, whether uh, whether you could do something uh, with you know, with putting them inside something like a drinking straw um, or something which would bend. So you could create, I don't know, something like a DNA sculpture, for example. You know, with a with a double helix spiral with the cross joins. Um, just as a, like an art piece, if you like. Um, so just thinking of, of you know, how think things that you could use them to create. Um, one of the things you used to see a lot in in, uh, in holiday destinations around kind of like Spain and, and places like that was um, glass um, objects or, or even something like a test tube, for example, which was filled with coloured sand. You know, it'd either be uh, just plain um, layers of coloured sand or it might be the sand might have been put in to form like a pattern or a, a, a picture. So I'm just trying to think then whether you could do something, you know, uh, a bit like a plastic container, sort of like this. And just, you know, half an inch of one colour, half an inch of another colour, half an inch of another colour. You know, just, just filling it up. Um, because that in itself would would form like an art uh, an art piece. Um, no, I was I was thinking that you you could always um, embed them in wax, but people have a tendency to want to burn candles. So uh, if you embedded them in wax, that wouldn't be a good idea because people tend to tend to want to burn it. Um, But I'm just wondering if something like, you know, like uh, I would say a small vase, but some sort of interesting shape like that, which you could um, you could then you know put the beads in in and in in a certain certain way to create something on the outside. Um, Just thinking then, if you made something um, like that, you could then sell them back to the tourists at the next Mardi Gras, recycling the beads back to the bean, <laughs> to, to the uh, things. Uh, no, fire is, yeah, I agree, fire is fun if it's done with care and responsibility. I'd, I'd love to have, for example, like um, a fire pit outside the house. Um, and because uh, I, I like, a, I won't say a log fire, but a wood fire, or even a coal fire, a real flame fire. Um, I love to see that with something like that. I mean, if we ever have a, a barbecue, I quite like sat sitting out next to it in, in an evening as it starts to get dark. And it's um, it, it keeps keeps you a little bit warm and it glows nicely and I can sit for hours like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, selling them back, recycling them. Yeah. Um. If done correctly with loads of uh... Hello She Devil, good evening. Uh, welcome and thank you for the tweet last night. And yes you get to see it uh, get to see it live. Um done correctly with loads of gasoline. 
Yeah, I, I hope you are joking, Fear Reaper. Um, it's um, gasoline itself isn't so bad. It's it's the gas in the gasoline that's dangerous. So you you can cause some real problems to yourself if you do mess about with gasoline. It's not the liquid as such, it's the gas that's on top of it, which is highly flammable. Yeah. Well, She Devil's a quilting expert, so I don't know. She, she, she Devil, I don't know if you can think of anything Kylie Artie could do with loads and loads and loads of small uh, strings of beads. Not sure an embroidery machine would actually be able to sew a long string of beads on, but it's almost something that we, you could create sort of something, <laughs> something with. What? Um, Cagliati has got lots of um, st uh, strings of very small beads, Mardi Gras beads. There we go. Which um, looking for something to do with them. And uh, we were just trying to think up, uh, think up of ideas. And um, I'm not very good at thinking up of ideas, it seems. Thought about pixel art and various ways of doing pixel art, but um, I was just thinking, you know, you, you with your um, quilting. I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to sew lots of things by hand, and I'm not sure sort of most machines would be quite happy with uh, with sewing them. But bush fungus. It's not very friendly to come into a stream on the pretext of otherwise of a song request and post links. Uh, normally, you get timed out for doing that. And just assuming everybody plays songs is also a bad thing. Right. Um, yeah, I'm doing the rim of this wheel. <laughs> OK, 
cute trill. Yeah, I don't know if you can describe him as that. I'm kind of surprised they're still over. I don't mind, I suppose it's. Uh, I was about to say, it, uh, this time of night it tends to be after most of the bedtime, so. But I guess there's a, there's a bedtime somewhere in the world. Kind of funny how they think streamers probably were born yesterday. Ah oh dear, anyway. about 10 hours um, the other one that I did um, which I guess you haven't seen um, I'll show you I'll just uh, cut this thread off I don't pull it out by accident but um, this one here uh, and I'll adjust the camera in just a second there we go so that one, that that same size hoop. So that took um, ten hours to do. Uh, did I draw the mallard? Or did you buy it? No, it's um, it's it's sort of um, half. Well, it's 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 half and half. It's off some photographs uh, with um, sort of a couple of bits. Um, Done by hand, shall we say, to fill in uh, fill in some of the details, um, and then and then transferred onto onto the material. Um, I'll just put this away. You can you can buy. Um, you can buy kits. I'm not, I'm not sure you can buy pre-printed material that's not in a kit. Well, certainly not from the place that I know to get these things from. Um, but you, what you can do is you... Um, and the way in which I transferred this is... Uh, I don't know where it is now, but you... you it, it will actually transfer with laser print. Um, it just takes a bit more heat to do that um, 
because a, a laser printed image is, is effectively plastic so it will if you heat it with an iron it will actually sort of soak into this material and stick to it uh, which is, but what um, what I've been what I've used with this is a transfer a heat transfer pen so I don't know what's in the ink but you you draw over your image with the pen and then when you uh, put it on the material and apply an, an iron it it transfers the image through um quite literally i don't know <laughs> she devil um it's uh, i haven't got the haven't got the bag out um it's a twill is all i know um i just buy it from the supplier of the the tool it's webster uh, but the supplier of the tool uh, and the the cotton that I'm using, although I can use embroidery cottons or wool or anything. Um, there's something about it. I, I've tried sort of stuff, similar stuff from sort of a, a, um, dressmakers before that looked to be the same. But when I tried using this um, this needle on it, it just fell apart the instant I started trying to uh, trying to use it. So. I've only ever used this stuff from the uh, from the supplier, and it uh, it works well. So I don't actually know. Um, I don't think it's cotton. No, it's more it's more of a nylony type um, material um, than or a cotton nylon mix, if if you know what I mean. It's it's not uh, it's not pure uh, pure cotton by any means. I do understand that um, this can be done on jeans. Or, or, or you know the, the denim material um, but uh, I've never tried it um, and I'm kind of wary because I do uh, you know as, as I'm pushing this through I can hear it actually breaking uh, some of the threads in the in the white material and, and it does because occasionally um, if you do it enough times in the same sort of area uh, by pulling it out and putting it back in when I've done something wrong in the past a few times and done it wrong quite a few times uh, you end up with, with small holes um, which I don't think I've ever ruined uh, an item but um, I can imagine if you were doing that on on jeans or on denim and it sort of uh, the material fell apart then you might be a bit uh, a bit upset it might it, it might work on on others, but I say I've not uh, not tried it. Yeah, oh, it's it's just it's certainly described as twill, but I'm not sure whether there is something because, as I say, I did try something that was also described as twill from a dressmaker and it fell apart. So, whether there's something about the you know the way in which this has been woven that resists that, or whether it's got some sort of I don't think there's any bonding agent in it or anything like that, but. You probably know a lot more about it than I do. OK, 
Okay, so. <laughs> Lots of bits of grey. As you can well, as you can see here, for example, if I you can see how it's not the, the grey doesn't form a continuous line even though I actually did do a continuous line on the back. And that is just the uh, you know just the nature of this. That's why you can't get real lots of detail into uh, into in, into a, a piece like this. You kind of either have to hint at the detail or um, or just miss it out altogether. So something like when I do the nameplate, for example, it's unlike. Whilst I, on the back, I can probably punch the word mallard. Um, almost certainly on the front, it'll just look like so moolere. <laughs> Just a mush of uh, of colours, but we'll see. Yeah, so I... Uh, um, it, um, it, of course, you know, I won't say it's a, a trade secret, but um, they just call it... Uh, the, the supplier just calls it punch fabric. Um, so they they um, they don't make it easy, shall we say, for you to go out and source it for yourself from another place, <laughs> which is I suppose you understandable, but can be a little bit uh, annoying when when that's precisely what you want to do is go out and source it from another place. Um, I've got some. This pipe here, I'm going to do in gold. Um, come up there. There's a bit of switch gear there. Okay. That's a light grey. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Hi there. So separating tangled strings of beads. A good luck. <laughs> Definitely good luck. Just think, it doesn't have to be done. You, know, you can take your time. There's uh, plenty of time to do it. I'm sure tomorrow will be a good day. So, um, gold for this. I may do gold for the valve gear as well, just to uh, make it show up. Actually, whilst I've got this in, this I'll do... No, I'll do a dark grey. Oh, well, this is a dark grey, yes. I'm going to do a... There's a, a vacuum hose here. So I'll do that in uh, in grey. It's sort of a mixed colour, but uh,
Hi there. Um, if you are asking what this is, um, this is called. Uh, well, it gets called punch craft. It's a what what's happening is the needle is pushing thread through the uh, through the material, and when it's withdrawn, uh, it creates a loop on the other side. So it's it's creating. It's effectively doing what. The same as uh, uh, the way rugs or some carpets are made. Um, only when they're manufactured, they're done using uh, hundreds of needles, not just a single one at a time. And the loops then uh, form the pattern on the other side. So what you're looking at here is the back or the working side, not the actual uh, display side. I'll turn it over and give you an indication of what it looks like when I've just finished this particular section. So there we go, we've just added uh, what would be a vacuum hose and once the other uh, material, sorry, once more of the uh, threads have been done around it, that'll actually sort of uh, close up and it'll look uh, a little bit more tidier than it currently does. Yeah, it, it's kind of <laughs> fascinating in a way, the way it actually sort of all goes together. What you can do with this as well, she devil, is um, the the length of the needle or, or the length of the loop is is um, governed by the length of the needle. So you actually get a loop which is half the height of this needle because you push it all the way through and then you draw, draw it back. And and the length of that needle is controlled here. There's there's a number of stops. Sort of uh, it's graduated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven stops. So you can actually get sort of seven different heights of um, a thread or of loops. So you can sculpt it as well. Um, I'm not going to do it on, not going to do it specifically on this. Um, although I will do the edges. I'll, I sculpt the edges up, um, and so it, it becomes like a d slightly domed on the on the the edges. It creates a nice neat edge that way. Um, but. Uh, I, I did try it on the other locomotive that I showed you a minute ago. It wasn't fantastically successful. But I've done it on things like uh, some pictures of cats that we've got. Um, you can sculpt bits of it. So um, things like facial contours you can do by a little bit by sculpting. Um, so that you can get some shape into, into the image as well. And you can then make lines that wouldn't otherwise be lines. Um, like if you have a white cat for example it would just be all white well if you sculpt it you can actually uh, put sort of lines in around the neck or the, the, the muzzle and things like that yeah they can uh, longer or shorter and yes so I, what I generally do I generally work at setting three arbitrarily when you're working with them all at the same length kind of doesn't really matter I suppose it really depends on just quite how soft you want the top surface to be the longer the longer the loop potentially the softer it is but then it just depends on how many you pack into the into a small area uh, and if you go all the way down to setting one you've got to get them really close together otherwise the the white shows through and it looks a little bit untidy but yeah generally I'll I'll get to the 
to the edge and then I'll, I'll sort of reduce from setting 3 to setting 2 for a couple of loops and then down to setting 1 right for the edge and that just holds you know the 1 holds the 2 the 2 holds the 3 and it forms a nice sort of firm edge and uh, which is what this one has I don't know if it'll show up I shouldn't have dropped that I don't know you, yeah, I think you can probably see it how it's just sort of curved around there. Um, it's certainly one of these things that's easier to see in person, but it, it forms a nice curve. And the loops then, um, these which are unsupported on the edge, are a bit uh, a bit raggedy. But the, these, because the, uh, they've been sculpted down, you don't get that raggedy uh, raggedy edge. Right, so that's that vacuum pipe. I was going to switch to gold. Hmm. It doesn't tell you about that in the kit. <laughs> it's something I just tried one day. Uh, and I thought, hey, that looks good. Oh, and tried it and it, uh, it worked. Where's my needle threader? There it is. So we draw the needle virtually all the way. You know, it, it does have a safe position where the needle's completely hidden. So the tool itself is relatively safe when uh, you're not using it. Not that it's, it's sharp. Yeah, but it's not a hypodermic needle, but it is sharp. Uh, and I guess I could push it through my skin if I really wanted to, but I'm not I'm not that way inclined. And then a really long needle threader all the way up so it pops out the top. And then the bit that needs patience sometimes is getting... The, you wouldn't think it'd be so hard sometimes to get a piece of thread. Well, you probably do actually, because I'm fairly sure you're used to, feed, uh, to to threading needles on uh, on the machine. But um, yeah, sometimes you've got a really wide threader and you still can't get the needle the the thread through it. It's a real uh, yeah. It was yes. I've never actually seen it written down anywhere, but there again, I must admit, I don't go frequenting websites looking for uh, stuff on, on 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 whatever. I don't know what the craft is actually called. As I say, Webster's describe it as punch craft because you're punching material, you know, thread through. But um, and I've kind of just stuck with the name, but I don't actually know whether it's, whether it's got a true true name or not. So one, two, three, um, and just like with embroidery or something like that, you um, it, it although this is fairly tight material, uh, tight in the hoop, it's I support it from behind, um, which does mean that I have to be a little bit careful to keep my fingers out of the way. Um, I, I have jabbed myself, but it's you know, I'm not I'm not actually caused dirt blood, unlike. Um, the sort of needles that, and pins that you're using there, they um, uh, some, they're somewhat sharper than this is. Okay, so we've got a steam pipe here, which I will do in gold. I guess if I was to do this in, in embroidery floss rather than this, I could get somewhat closer to the actual colours used. But um, ow, I'm sort of um, just doing, uh, shall we say, a slight interpretation. But I think um, anybody who is sort of half familiar with these particular steam engines will be able to recognize it 
and anybody who's really familiar with these steam engines will probably be going on at me about how I've put a steam pipe in the wrong place or something like that <laughs> I was just thinking about that your um, reference then um, about sticking yourself with needles and pins just reminded me of something that I did when I was a young child. I actually stood on a needle, a sewing needle, and it went right through my big toe. And was sticking out both sides. <laughs> yeah, the steam pipe's in the wrong place. Well, I think I've only got two steam pipes and there should be three. Actually, I'm going to put a third one in. Uh, and that, uh, sticking the needle through my toe is how I know pulling thread through really tickles. Not only does it really tickle, but you can't scratch it because it's inside. I um I do watch uh, a, one or two streamers that play um, Train Simulator, and I have been on uh, on a few streams where you'll get somebody complaining about uh, one of the models in the um, in the game, which isn't you know isn't quite the right colour, isn't hasn't quite got that. You know that dot in that place on that console. Ah <laughs> uh, dear. I didn't hit the bone, but um, I didn't scream. It as it just tickled, uh, but it'd already gone through by then, so it was just a case of pulling it, uh, pulling it through. But. Oh, yeah, no, I gather what you mean. I didn't think you'd want to be picking up a needle with your, with your, with your feet, but uh, hit a bone. Yeah, and because it's bent then, it, it's got to come out. It, it's got to be ripped out almost. Yeah, that one I can imagine really hurting. I was lucky. I was just thinking that it's amazing the trivia you pick up sometimes in games, especially things, you know, uh, simulator type games. Um, it's where I learnt what these these pipes that I'm actually colouring gold at the moment actually do on a steam engine. They're actually, they're actually there to stop you um, wrecking the engine, basically. <laughs> Missed 
one bit that I was going to do, so I shall come back to that. Um, Must remember to keep my fingers out of the way. keep knocking myself on this camera as you probably just saw won't be so bad but it kind of jabs my glasses into the side of my nose when I do it There's nothing holding these loops of thread in, by the way. Um, they're just held by uh, by friction of the material. Do I do the smaller details first? Um, no, not really. It, it kind of doesn't matter. Oh, I've, I've never found that it actually matters much. Um, trying to do the small details first. The... Um, the threads just kind of go where they want to go. You need to, um, whilst whilst you might think you can get quite fine details in because kind of one loop is like one pixel. Uh, so you kind of would expect to sort of be able to get down to sort of, I don't know, these. You've probably got about 12 loops per inch. Um, but in actual fact, what happens is as you're doing the other loops, they sort of just push amongst themselves. You know, it's sort of just literally, I suppose it depends on just which way the needle's pointing as you come through, as to where where exactly the stitch goes when there's others around it. So I I I don't tend to try and do that um, place them exactly. It's, uh, I've never had a great deal of success in trying to do that. Um, what what works best in a way is um, not trying to do too too fine a detail. Um, I've probably got a little bit ambitious on on these these wheels, trying to get some of the red and red and black in, but they'll sort of give the impression of. Uh, so it's it's not too not too bad, but things like here I've just done this um, the sort of three three sorts of pipes. But as you can see, this on, I'll show you on the back. But there's quite a bit of a distance between here and here. Yet on the front they almost merge together. And yet when I look on the back, you've got something like about quarter to half an inch, about a quarter of an inch between here and here. 
but that's that's the same place on the front now I can't I can do a little bit to um, to assist that if I want it to by putting in some more black instead of just forcing it into the space between which would then push push the gold to one side a little bit when we get to the end I may do that or I may just not bother um, you know it's as I say it's the idea is to give the impression not uh, not specifically to, uh, to to get down to every single detail so yeah I literally can start where I want um, So sometimes I'll start these like I do cross stitches, start at one corner and work my way across. Um, sometimes like this I've done, I did. I started did the black first. Did I? No, I did the red first. I did the red, then I did the black uh, in, in, in sort of a section like this. Because uh, I know the, the main body is blue. Um, and it's going to be it's going to be quite a large area of blue so I'm doing some of the fiddly bits first um, and that wants to be black in there and I've missed it that's a very light gray so yeah I want, there's some uh, some valve gear here that wants to be grey. And that wants to be black in there, so I have missed the odd bit out here doing this. What colour have we got in gold? Okay, well, the lettering on the front's gold, so I'll have a go at um, putting this lettering, uh, something that looks like lettering in with this gold. Now with something like this, I'll try and get well. I want to try and get as many stitches in the space as I can. But what I'm going to do is try and pack them fairly tight. That way, I stand the best chance of getting something that looks like it might be lettering when it uh, when it's done Yep, I do. I do a lot. It's um, it's been a little bit of a time since I uh, I did any, but yes, I uh, I do cross stitch as well. Quite enjoy it, and um, and bead work on cross stitch I quite enjoy as well. Although that's a little bit frustrating when they don't lie right. You also make uh, rugs, uh, latch hook rugs. So that's. The, the letter N with a little O by it. <laughs> so as you can see, it's probably going to turn out to be just a mush. Um, I don't think I've got a cross... No, most of the cross stitches are over there on frames. But I quite enjoy it. I started, I started cross stitching a long, long... Well, probably about... 
20 odd years ago because my wife collects pocket dragons and there was a pocket dragon cross stitch which she wanted the picture of but she claims not to have the patience to do anything um, so it because I knew if you like because I knew how to sew um, I got it was it became my job and I quite like doing it which is kind of not surprising these days and uh, and so um, I got to complete it and then it was oh can you just do this one and can you <laughs> and I've got um, I've got two large boxes now of cross stitch which I hope I'd to, be, to, to get to one day but I'm not ever sure whether I will or not but um, uh, ow uh, but there's some uh, some really nice cross stitch pic pictures I don't um, I don't particularly like the uh, sort of teddy bear type uh, cross stitches I prefer sort of the um, the scenic ones or you know ones that resemble a photograph shall we say so you might get like a an elephant on the savannah a bit like the pyro, uh, pyrography thing that I did <laughs> so for 40 that says number 4468 <laughs> in gold <laughs> and there's no way on earth I'd do the red try and do the red uh, outline on it um, then it, it might it just might distinguish between individual um, letters when we put black around it but um, that's probably uh, unlikely now in theory there should be some on on the cab at the back um, there should actually be some on the tender but I'm not going to do any on the tender what I'm going to do on the cab here at the back is just um, uh, just put a block of gold So 
So yes, you can do any bit of the image. You don't actually have to do things in any particular order, she devil or anything like that. You can just wherever you feel like. I tend to, I do tend to sort of stick in one place and work from there, rather than dotting about all over the place. But um, sometimes if I've just got like this, I've got the colour in the needle, and rather than take it out and have to re-thread it again afterwards. I will sometimes do uh, do another area. That'll do. <laughs> yeah. It is and in most in most cases I don't think it uh, I mean you can you can probably almost read it quite happily on the back although it's backwards of course but uh, at least you know, I can look at that and maybe because I know what it's supposed to say I can I can sort of see an N something for for the other two ones I probably couldn't get at all, but it's sort of. Um, I mean, I suppose what you th there is actually, you know, having said this, I've done, you know, this is the front side, this is the back, but in actual fact, there is absolutely nothing to say that you couldn't have this as the front side. You probably want to take an awful lot more care in the stitching. To make sure you didn't have gaps in it like i've got a little bit of a gap in here which doesn't matter when i get to the back uh, to the other side because the, the the thread is so bushy it just fills in those gaps but and i'd probably want to take a little bit more care in actually cutting off the threads so they didn't end up with tufts um little tufts around the place but you you almost could use the back side as as a face side if you want it to if you really wanted to get those details in but then it's you could almost have embroidered it so but there again I suppose it's a different form of embroidery right um, put the put the silver back in to do this around here um, which I, I missed earlier. Could do I could do it in white or I can do it in this grey silver colour. I can do it and potentially do it in white because it's silver. Um, it, it, it's sort of a silver colour in real life and um, it, it just kind of reflects light so I could do it in white which would distinguish it from the grey of the wheels I think I'll do that with white I'm going to white out so I'll get that out later rather than now when I'm going to do a little bit of the black that I missed in fact I need some white out anyway because this um, some of the stuff here on the front is a really light colour because uh, I've polished it basically so it's really shining light so I'll get some white out to do that with I haven't got any out at the moment so I'm not going to go digging in the box just uh, just for now Yeah, indeed, it's amazing what your uh, your eye sees that isn't actually there. <laughs> yeah, 
it's something I'm particularly guilty of because I love detail. Uh, I'd love to be able to put the detail in, but there's absolutely no way I can do it. So uh, yeah, I'm not even about to try, but. I guess I've learned my lesson on it because I've tried it in the past and it um, if you try actually too hard to uh, to actually put real detail in with this you end up um, packing the threads in too much and then they, they don't look right on the other side so you kind of the attempt to put too much detail in actually almost goes the opposite way I must find my em um, embroidery scissors rather than using those big things yeah I'm going to put a black a bit of black in there I've actually hidden my uh, embroidery scissors somewhere. I'm not sure where they are, but they're, they're hidden so that uh, a certain other third party doesn't use them for things which they're not intended <laughs> and, uh, and makes them blunt. Now with something like this, it's it's a stop and start, which um, actually consumes a fair bit of time. It can take longer to do sort of small bits like this than it could take to do the rest of the uh, rest of the locomotive, just because um, of the time it takes to just keep stopping and starting. I mean, at the moment, I've spent close to four hours doing what you can see now. And yet at this moment in time, I don't particularly see any reason why we shouldn't um, sort of do this whole thing in, in 10 to 12 hours. That's assuming I don't run out of a particular thread like I did last time. I'm not actually sure whether I've got enough um, blue to do this with. So what I'll probably um, do with it when I do the blue is, uh, of, which is what the main body is, I'll probably do sections of it like this and then a little bit of the this sort of wing here and then a bit of the side so that if I run out and it's like buying anything the uh, the that's supposed to be colour match or that you need to colour match um, the thread's done in batches so on the last locomotive the sky colour that's used the, the new batch that I bought didn't quite match the old one and in certain lights it's visible um, so I don't want that particularly to happen on this one so if I do sort of small panels like this because of course the light reflects off them differently if I do that panel and the one behind it is slightly a different shade 
that's not going to be a problem because that be just the way light bounces off things um, and I will will be doing things like outlining this probably with a lighter blue because of the, the way the corners shine and reflect light so um, that's just something I've got to bear in mind when I do it is to make sure I do it in such a way probably sort of horizontally to make sure I do it horizontally so that if I end up having to uh, change shade um, it'll be a horizontal line and it will actually sort of look reasonably natural uh... <laughs> you oh well my little embroidery scissors of course are like nail scissors but they're not <laughs> Uh, and they're really fine tips, so you can get in and, and, and snip really close to the to the threads. Um, but you, you start using it for cutting paper and things like that, or bits of string in the garden, and they uh, they very quickly will go blunt. And they're, they're really nice scissors, they're really sharp and tight, so they, they cut really well. So I don't, I don't want them spoiled. <laughs> Um, black. Okay. Um, but yeah, running out of a colour. Well, it's yeah, it it it's it's where you have to put the two side by side. That's when it really yeah. Um. When I did the sky on the other one, I, I did it sort of actually I did it right to left, but I did it vertically. Uh, and I ran out about here <laughs> and so this section is very slightly a different colour in actual fact it kind of doesn't look bad it's it, it's almost like there's a slight shadow that you see you can say it's not it, it's not too bad but um, I will be remembering to do this one horizontally so that if I get a slightly different shade you know the sky does have different graduations so I can get away with it the artistic license. Um, term as, you know, I guess doing this if I do the front of the loco before I do the back. If the uh, if the, the back tender, for example, is a very slightly different colour, it's in the distance. So it'll either be lighter or darker. <laughs> kind of both work for distant objects. So I can get away with it. Um, but anyway, it's now five past ten at night, so it's about time I gave up for the uh, for the evening. Um, I have got more black I could do, but I'm not going to do it tonight. We'll do that uh, do that tomorrow. Uh, in fact, a, a large proportion of the underneath of this locomotive will all be black, but we shall sort that afterwards. I haven't decided. Uh, I think I may do what I did with the other one uh, and put this on um, on some grass to green basically around it um, the the main pictures that I've taken the image from were done out of York Railway Museum so it's actually on paving but um, yeah let's put it on some grass some nice grass green grass plus I've got a fair bit of green um, and paving's a bit of a pain in the neck to get to look right so um, anyway we've uh, no finish for tonight, so that's what it looks like so far. Um, it's starting to look like a locomotive now, <laughs> just a little bit with the wheels. Um, looks a bit better on camera than it does in person, but that uh, it, it will improve in person. Oh, thank you for joining, uh, She Devil. It's um, it's fun having everybody around. Um, so yes, we'll continue obviously tomorrow with uh, with this. So if there's anybody that is watching, isn't following, then of course I'd quite appreciate it if you did. That's if you're interested in coming back to see more, of course. Um, if you'd just like to be notified when I go live and you don't trust Twitch to do that for you, you're also welcome to follow me on Twitter. Uh, the details uh, below the stream window, they'll be on the end plate in a moment, but it's outside of gun art. And uh, as I'm a little bit fond of saying at the moment, I tweet when I go live, not when I have my lunch. 
So any any tweets will be related uh, to the stream or to art in, in one form or other. But on the other hand, if you just want to try and catch me tomorrow, when I will should be streaming again tomorrow night, it's 8pm in the UK, 1900 hours GMT, or in whatever time zone you're in, look back about 2 hours 10 minutes, and that would have been 8 o'clock in the UK, which is the time I start streaming tomorrow. So thank you everybody. It's been fun having you around. Hope to see you again on another stream. Bye-bye.